Okay, it's Matt again. Uh, this is actually the date <clears throat> right after the previous video. Um, still working on this Aaron uh, InMove robot here. This is an open source hardware project. Um, you can go to InMove.fr to get all the parts. But anyway, uh, so yesterday I had, I had installed the... Um, you can't really see it anymore, but the neck motor, which is a larger servo motor. And then uh, today I went out to Radio Shack and got a, a smaller standard servo motor and uh, connected up the, the jaw pieces. Now it's not connected on this side. I have to screw it in. But it is, it is connected on the other side here. It was well, touching at least for now. So I got a drill hole, put a washer in. Um, uh, I wired the servo wires back uh, over the top between the motors and then back down through the spinal column here. Uh, I used some extra uh, servo extending, extension cables to pull it down, zip tie around the neck, come up, and then those, uh, those motor... Servo motor cables go down to here, into the board. Uh, right now I'm using pin 18 and 23 or whatever. It doesn't really matter because, like I said earlier, I'm using the rpi.gpo Python library. Um, uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can do it with a B plus or even an A if you want, using the same uh, software library. Uh, the, the power for the motors, you cannot power these motors directly from the Pi, of course, because it, it draws too much amps. So what you do instead uh, is you pull, um, you get power from <laughs> another source. Uh, earlier I was using uh, four AA batteries. Uh, this is, this, uh, vintage power supply thing here that I actually just bought today um, is it, it just provides six volts is all you need uh, this one's two amps um, but that so that goes into here uh, which goes on one of the uh, the power rails um, so it's actually using the power from this uh, but controlling only controlling it from the pi um, so, see what else was I going to say? I don't know. Anyway, um, and then the, the Pi here, Pi here is just getting power from this, uh, US, USB hub, whatever. So I have a, I have an HDMI monitor from Adafruit. I got it. Uh, it's a seven inch touchscreen monitor so you can actually click and stuff it's it's convenient um, and that this is actually powered from the pi which is nice um and i got a wireless keyboard and wireless mouse hooked into it um so anyway what what you do is you write a bunch of bash scripts um Let's see if I can type her with one hand. Uh, servo, servo move dot py. So you'll start out and you write. Um, write one of my hands kind of shaky. Sorry. Write one of these things, and this is a Python script, and this use the library, the RPI GPO library to control PWM. Um, and then I actually call that from another script, uh, depending on the motors I'm using. So I have one for the, the larger motor. Uh, let's see, what is it? Servo move H something or other, HS0805 and that's setting up um, frequency, duty cycle, low, high range, 
and then calling that Python script from a bash script and then going from there. And there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of these that I've made. So I got, so it goes from, what is it? Servo move dot py to uh, servo move RS standard and servo move HS 805 BB. And then uh, I called those using servo move range or something, which, which uh, changes the uh, duty cycles to uh, a percentage of what the valid range is set for. And then I call servo move range from uh, neck move or jaw move um, and pass in the pin at that point. And then the jaw up, down, center, left, right, neck, neck up, down, center, left, right, or whatever, those are, um, those are already set to just call the move for whatever the body part is. And then, and then, uh, the correct position to have that achieved, uh, behavior. So then I wrote all these, a few test scripts that test different things. Um, so test, you know, test the jaw up and down, test the neck left and right. Um, I did want to say one more time, I'm, I'm using a Lulzbot Taz. These things are pretty easy. Uh, they, they do take, well, this one, it takes a while to print. It's hard. Um, I mean, it can be easy. It can be really simple. Um, it depends on what software you're using. Um, and the slicers, it, it really does depend on the slicer software you're using. So I, I started out using slicer within a three, <laughs> um, there's supposed to be a better one called Cura. Uh, and you can just pop the SD card out from a laptop or something, stick it in here and go. And I, I used uh, ABS plastic for this. Um, I, a, a lot of the pieces I've, I've printed, I printed them on really low res stuff and I had problems earlier. So you can, you can see this grainy junk and this grainy junk. Uh, I, I did actually manage to fix some of the face pieces. Uh, you, you kind of rub some acetone on them. You, sh you need to be careful with acetone by the way, but uh, it'll stick to your hands and it's really horrible for you and definitely do it in a ventilated area. But um, you can smooth out the parts a little with acetone. Don't do the glass bath, acetone bath thing. That's really dangerous. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So anyway, let me, let me show you a test here. I'm going to start the, start a test script that does a couple things. And then I'm going to grab the neck because otherwise this will fall off the chair. So ready, set, go. So yeah, this is, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> Once you get the, the uh, neck and the jaw working together, uh, just the neck alone wasn't as scary. <laughs> That's <laughs> so freaky. <laughs> when it just like zaps his head straight towards you. Oh, the other thing is, uh, so for these uh, small gears like this one here, um, if you're having problems doing, uh, getting the gears to move smoothly, olive oil is really good gosh olive oil is really good for uh greasing the gears if you don't have anything from a hardware store so that that was one full test there i don't have i still don't have this motor uh i i have it so i don't know maybe tomorrow but i, I probably should print some other pieces for this first um the plan for this one actually uh, here's the ear pieces that go on the side. Um, so the, the, and this is a connect that goes in the front. Well, there's a place for it at least. I'm not sure I'm going to use it. Um, the plan for this one 
is I have this. Where the heck is it? I have this Logitech camera that I mounted the eyeball thing on with uh, Velcro around the outside. Uh, well, I, I did a Velcro circle around the camera and then uh, glued this eyeball on there. I had it in there earlier, but uh, pulled it out to put the motors in. So I'm going to put this back on one side and probably not not going to use the eyeball motor attachments. There are other, there's a whole eyeball mechanism that um, the original creator for InMove designed to put in there. So it's kind of a shame. And I did print it out. Um, let's see if I have it. It's this thing. There's your eyeball mover or whatever it is. So it attaches like to the nose in there on the inside of the nose. And you have another, another small servo motor. Um, oh, oh yeah, here, here's the original face that I did back when I didn't know how to, to do 3d printing. So, uh, I've come a long way from there. Uh, this was, I tried to do an auto, uh, auto support or something using some weird setting, screwed it up. So, oh, so anyway, so I got a pie instead. So normally people use Arduinos for this, or at least that's what people have been using. And a lot of people say, oh, no, pies can't do PWM. Well, guess what? They can. And I just I just proved that here. So you can use a pie for PWM. No, it's not as, as sensitive, but it does work. And I, I do have more of a range than just the left-right thing or whatever you saw. There are places in between, but it can be done. And the whole point of this is... Uh, eventually all this is going to be enclosed. I'm going to have separate batteries on here. And, um, this, the Pi is actually wireless right now. So I could log into this from a laptop or something and be able to control this from there. Um, and, oh, so right now doing some, uh, AI software, um, I've been working on since 1995 and uh, full neural network stuff. And that's what's going to go in, in this. Well, not, not in it. So the pie, the buys pie is going to be the uh, control mechanism to control the, the body of the, uh, the robot, but the brain uh, can't run on a pie. Sorry. So the, the brain, which is uh, some, uh, it's actually in Java. It's going to be on a laptop talking to this thing, um, reading the, the vision and other sensors I'll connect and then uh, sending that through a neural network. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so a bit long, long, a lot of work. Just show it, do a demo one more time of the freaky head. <laughs> so doesn't have a lot, doesn't, ah! <laughs> doesn't have a lot of range. Um, I think that is all the way up and down right now, but, um, I don't know. So if you want to, uh, the AI software uh, that I'm working on to go with this, and I, I, I will ah, release a library that people can tie into the, the neural network at some point. So they can not, not only use a Pi, but maybe use an Arduino or maybe use the neural net for other things. Um, and you can get that from Isomer Programming. That is my website. It is. This is a company website. So, yeah. So good. Uh, we're still still working on Aaron. Still working on the AI. Doing a lot of other things in the meantime. All right. Bye, guys.